Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Bit of a new thing now, we've got a guest. This is my first ever female fighter, uh, Rhythm, the Wrecking Ball Core. She has been training under me for about three years now. Yep. From nothing, so zero to hero in three years, coming off her first fight in which she had a six, one, two, three, four, five, six second knockout, which is pretty amazing. And now the gym record. She fights at 115 pounds, six second knockout. That's profound. What do you attribute that to? To you? I mean, you, like the game plan was pretty clear. I felt like the last parting words when you were in my corner, when you said those things like, oh, you, she gonna look for the head kick. You gotta keep your hands up. She gonna look for it. That kept with me throughout the thing when the referee brought us in in the cage and he's like, he's talking to us about a bunch of stuff that I don't even remember what he was saying. <laughs> yeah. The only thing that I was able to hear from the whole crowd it was the, your voice, that's it. And the thing that you said, like, she's gonna look for the head kick, and that's what she did. She, like, she trying to draw my hands down. She circled out to throw his, her lead, her lead leg. Like she was trying to set up the lead head kick that was a feel like. First, she kicked me on the body to draw my hands down so the head is open. Uh -huh. And then I'm like, yep, she's gonna circle out this way, and there is the cross. So mm. I attributed to you the last parting words you said to me, and I feel like that was it. Awesome. Yeah. Well, it's not very common for our gym to have, we don't have a very large female constituent, uh, constituency. Uh, I'm, not the, I'm not an English professor, so don't, don't kill me in the comments. Um, we have had uh, a, a bit of an uptake now since, since Rhythm's been coaching. She's, she runs a women's only class uh, once a week, and then we have Samantha running one once a week as well. And, and since, since Rhythm started coaching, it's, been, it's just swollen, right? So I feel like with athletes like you in the scene, there's going to be a lot more women that are wanting to fight. Is there any advice that you could give to other women out there in how to start that journey? Yep, to start the journey, like for me, it was always to find a perfect place to train and with the with the good coaches, right? So yeah, I had to find somebody who had gone to, through the same thing that I want to go through, who has been in the same position that I eventually will be. So yeah, for me, it was to get a good coach, to get a good gym, and just start training, just get it in. So when when did you first know that you wanted to fight? So I think I was around like. 13 or 14 years old and at, at that age like uh, women's fighting was just like coming up in spe specifically in UFC like before that there were things that a lot of people have said that females will never fight in UFC mm -hmm. and then this one girl came out Ronda Rousey everybody knows about her and she just took over from there and I remember um, my brother was a big fan of MMA, uh, okay. as in journal, and he like he and he got so stoked to see female fights, right? And he was the one who actually introduced me to it, and was like, oh, you know, like females also fight. They're like such a badass. And I saw a couple of fights, and I'm like, you know, a uh, little, little kid I was, I said like, oh, I can do that. That's <laughs> that's not difficult. <laughs> I, can, I can totally do that because I was just a so aggressive kid in the childhood, right? We just like punching guys, like having fights all the time. And I'm like, ah, that sounds like something that I will do. And little did I know like how difficult is it's going to be for me to even get the training for it at that point, right? So uh, after that, like it just like that thing stuck with my mind that I really want to try it. So even at that point, I wasn't like 100% sure that I have to do it, like I will do it. I always want to do something in sports. Um, I feel like my aggression was like sports make my aggression go out in a very good way mm. uh, that most of the other things around me weren't doing good enough for me so that thing that's kept in my mind like oh i want to do i want to train i want to train i will get something in mma but when i actually went out when i was like 15 or 14 years old and i'm like trying to find gyms or coaches around me i find out that there is literally nothing even till this date when i went back recently back to india I couldn't find even a single gym to train at. Mm. So you were in India when yeah. you first figured out that you wanted to yeah, fight? Yeah, I was in India. I was born, I'm an Indian, I'm born there. So I lived like 18 years over there and then I came here. So 
yeah, so that was like a big problem for me, like to find somebody, and especially when your background is not athletic at all. I have no person in my family who, who was a sports person, mm. right? In general, like people not seeing sport as a very good career in India because it doesn't make money. And then you, out of all sports that could have made money, you choose a sport that's really very broke. It's like <laughs> yeah. MMA, yeah. right? So I'm like, oh yeah, and then you're a female. And, and then you're like, you're, you're like the only girl in the family at that point. And everybody just loves you. And we're like, why the hell you want to get punched in the face? Like things like that just started arising right away, even in the family. Like, why? Why this? Why? 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 Why won't you go and do a sport like swimming or badminton or something or a track athlete? I was a track athlete. I didn't want to do track at all, <laughs> but I just wanted to do sports, you know. So I'm like, okay, whatever it is, I'll do it. So my parents were like, or my father was like, oh, you just do a track or something. This is this, this might be not a good option for you, and uh, and I can understand as a as a point of view of a parent, it's difficult to see your kid fighting and just bleeding, and it's, it's very dangerous. But at that point, me being a teenager, couldn't understand it. Now I can understand it, right? So it's like, why my family is just like not letting me do what I want to do? Mm. Why the environment around me, like nothing just makes sense. And why this idea was in my head in the first place that I want to be a female fighter, um, when there's nothing around me suggests the same. So it was very difficult. I, I just kept on trying to get even like any kind of training, like boxing or something. But it was so difficult. The closest that I could have got anything related to training was wrestling. Mm. And that was like way far further from the city that I was born in. Okay. And the time that I was born at this like 2016, 2017, when I was 16, 17 years old, that was terrible, terrible time for females in India. There were like many like huge amount of cases of being female getting raped on the street, getting kidnapped and all that stuff. It was horrible time for, for a girl to live on its own. And even like, for that matter of fact, a grown woman to go out and work in the night. Crazy. That was terrible, like clearly very terrible. So at that point, you ask your parents, you know, like you wanna go out yeah. and live in another city to train something that they don't appreciate at all. <laughs> yeah. Like, mm. if I was at their, their place, f quite frankly and honestly, I would have done the same as like, no, you're not going down there. Yeah. I'm not letting my kid out that like vultures out there, whoever it is, and you're not in the age to protect yourself, right? Yeah. So that was it. So like, I knew that, that uh, they're never gonna agree to it. So I never asked them, <laughs> I never asked them. So eventually um, the, the stars just started getting aligned. My brother uh, got here in Canada and there was a lot of wave going off MMA in Canada specifically. Mm -hmm. And like he came down here, he saw like, oh, there are a lot of people training here. There are a lot of gyms, there are a lot of good people training here. Like Canadian MMA is really good. So he's like, oh, if, if you really want are into something and he was the one Thing that in my life was very consistent that even the time that I didn't believe in myself that person was there to like to tell me like you can't do it so he's like if you want to do it just so you know that I'm there and I believe that you can do it mm. so that helped me a lot and he uh, one day I just I remember talking to him on the phone I'm just I'm like tearing apart that I don't know where the life is going what I'm gonna do and how it's gonna all happen right and I remember the day that I was take, I was supposed to go on a flight, like uh, December 13, 2018, when I came down here. December 12, 2018, I remember talking to my brother and saying that I don't want to come. Mm. I don't want to go to Canada. It's just the thing of getting out of your comfort zone just hit you 24 hours before your flight. Right? Yeah. So like, yeah. now this is getting real, right? So I'm not going to see my family a lot. I'm not going to be around the people that I know. This is, this is going to be the place that I have no idea about how it's going to work out. Just a random piece in my mind that I wanted to do something in MMA. And this whole thing is happening for me to go to Canada now. Will that make any sense, you know? Mm -hmm. So the, one of the few moments that you really doubt yourself, that is, is it going to make sense? So that was the moment that hit me like on that day. And I was talking to my brother on the phone and him being him is like, he said that 
you know, you don't think that in your head, I remember like exactly the word he said that, don't think that it's going to change anything in my eyes about you, that even if you don't step on that plane tomorrow. I'll be the same, everything around will be the same, I'll love you the same, and you will be my sister that I love the most in the world, but I, I would think that things will be very different. I just want to let you know that if you come down here, I feel like you, you should take that leap of faith. Mm. You know? so, that's so important to have somebody yeah. that is, uh, that's supportive around you. Especially in a sport like MMA, like it's a very, um, so it's an individual sport, but we really thrive off of having a network of people around that can kind of help us, yeah. right? Um, now, there may be some people out there that don't have that. Yeah. Um, is, if there is a woman out there right now that's dealing with some a similar situation that you had to deal with right like nobody really not a lot of supporters out there if there's someone out there right now that's that's doubting whether or not they should fight what would you say to them um the exactly same word that my brother said to me you have to take the leap of faith sometimes there there are going to be um situations in the life that Things feel like, oh, maybe, maybe I can do it, maybe not. The maybe that if I do it or if I don't. In those situations, I feel like the major difference is made by the way you perceive the situation is whether are you willing to take the leap of faith or you're not. Mm. And I, I, I will say that that 100% when you take the leap of faith, it actually works for you. It seems like... You sometimes it feel like, oh, I didn't get successful in this thing, but the journey to get to that thing just changes you and shapes you in such a person that you will never be if you have never took took that leap yeah. of faith in your life. Yeah, I truly believe that. Yeah. So if you are somebody who's dealing with the same thing that I was dealing that day, that what if it doesn't happen? What if it doesn't make sense at all? What if it's just, just a random thought and just passed by you? Um, nothing comes to you for no reason. Mm. You know, have you heard the line, there are no accidents? Mm. So if it, come, it, it has the idea, even the thought is, had came to your mind, it's been around you for a while. You have just not seen it yet. The universe have already made so much plans for it for you, but you are the one who's seen it at the last and everybody else has seen it before you. Mm. So at that moment, if you are struggling for in that moment, you just have to take the leap of faith. So you moved to Canada. Um, what is the process around how you ended up here? Once you were in Canada, how did you end up walking into this gym? Because we're in Vancouver, which is becoming like fight city. And there's probably 150 different gyms here at least. So... Why this one and how this one? The, the story is like, it's going to have so much up and down. It doesn't like, I got, got on the plane thinking that I'm going to train, but that not exactly what happened when I landed. Hmm. So when I landed, I, I came down here and the things were like so different. Like when you don't have your family here, you have to make money by yourself. You have to pay for yourself, everything. And I, we, like I was just 18 years old. Uh, the little that I, I never worked for anything before, right? So okay. I have to find a job <laughs> and all that stuff. Life hits. Life hits, yeah. exactly. And that was way too early then. <laughs> <laughs> like, really? I thought that maybe, usually it's like 20, 24, right? You're 24 years old when you're like, oh yeah, I'm done with my degree. Now life hits you. Okay. Then you got to find a job and you're 18 and I'm like, what? Uh, I need to study here? in order to stay in this country? I didn't, <laughs> yeah. thought, I didn't thought it too. So, <laughs> okay. And I really didn't thought it through because I got registered into some university that was like extremely away from the place we used to live. Okay. And then I didn't have license, no car, no money to buy a car for that sake. Me and my brother both in the situation we are both studying and he's, he's studying on the other end in Burnaby and I'm studying in Abbotsford. Okay, so, so for those of you that are not from Van City, Burnaby is where our gym is. Um, Abbotsford is about an hour's drive. 
more if there's traffic. And, you and if you're by car. Yeah, and that's by car, right? So you're transiting out there. And yeah. there's there's no like uh there's no metro or sky train no or anything. No sky train there. There's only absolutely till the date only one bus that picks up around like 20 to 25 people at a time and that comes after every 3 hours. Wow. Yep. So we have not I don't have much control over my subject so the very first semester was terrible i was given like subjects late in the night and there and i'm not i'm not a cold person so i don't like the snow at all so <laughs> i came in january oh you're from so, india so yeah, i would so, imagine <laughs> so so there was a lot of snow so basically um i had to wake up early in like four o'clock in the morning be the first person in the bus then drive all the way down to a place that took that from that exactly station, they took like 20 people at a time and then they throw it them in the Abbotsford and then they come back after three hours. And if you are in the first 20 of the lineup of the people that starts like maybe four or three o'clock in the morning, then you can make it unless you have to stand there for like four hours for the next bus to come down. Uh. So. Yes. So I you're either in the up. first 20 or you're four hours the, late. I was all, most of the time I will be the person who's like away, yeah, right? So like I'm in the back of the road. So I'm like, yeah, because I got to travel before to come that space. People were around there. So like it was just terrible. So basically the whole period that I studied, I slept on buses. I slept on stations. When I say slept, I mean really like sleeping late in the night when there's the last bus that could come around like 12 o'clock and it's like nobody's there on the, on, on the station. Like as far as you can see, there's literally not even a single car. And there's like snow, snow, and snow. <laughs> and you gotta sleep <laughs> there because you gotta wake up early in the morning again. You don't have much time to rest because I, ha I have to get done by my studies. Because I figured out that I cannot study and I cannot train at the same time for many reasons. First the situation, the money situation I had, I can't pay for all that in one go. The time I have, I have literally, I was traveling eight hours a day. I was like in, in the, transit, in transit eight, hours, eight, a eight day. hours a day. And then I have like classes back to back. So I was not like one or two courses. I was taking five to six courses per semester. So if you don't know, if you study a little bit, that's a lot. That's, that's Why would maximum. you take six classes per semester? Because I wanted to get done with my studies ASAP so I can do what I do right now. Because mm. I figured out very quickly that it's not going to happen. And I'm not a person that like, m that put one foot in one boat on, oh, and the other foot in the other boat. I'm, okay. I, that's not just a corrector of me that I am either all in or I'm not in at all. So I had to take that, th those many courses so I can cut down the time period of my study and literally bring it to one year and four months that was supposed to be two to three years somewhere okay so i can train earlier yeah I was so you like just fast tracked it fast tracked everything like i'm in one class bank to other there were days that i haven't eaten anything like the whole day because i was back to back to back to back to classes i got so much assignments to do and i was like literally doing assignments on the buses like on the stations and like literally sometimes i will just sit in a bus and in a train or a bus and like thinking like oh yeah i'll do an assignment and i the time i'm finished i look up i'm literally in some other city like, that was where i'm not supposed to be I'm like, where the hell i am and i have to take back in like oh yeah i gotta go all the way back now so that was how most of my my study life was and then so that was a year and yes, four months of four your life months. so i ended up somewhere around when corona happened right okay so yeah. so i got like super stuck like oh i'm done with my studies i'm gonna train i'm gonna find started fighting gyms and all this stuff and bam <laughs> corona happened and then like everything shut down damn and I'm like okay Everything shut down. I had a, a decent job at that point. They kicked me out and they're like, oh, we are shutting down. So no money, nothing, right? And I'm like, okay, that's life. And that's what actually one of the worst times of my life were because there was no goal. I got drifted apart because the situation around us, around not exactly me, but everybody, his life was just different. Just Corona hit and everything changed. Yeah. Some people changed for a good way in a good way, they, they see more positivity in life. 
but some for some people it was a very dark time yeah. and unfortunately i was on the part of where it was very dark time. i think most people yeah <laughs> yeah so i was like literally nothing to do you can't go out you're not making money you're just like living off of reverences whatever a woman is giving you if you're lucky enough and if you're not born here then that's a different story that whether you'll get it or not you don't know next month you'll get the money to eat something or not yeah yeah so life was like that and then you you got like you know you got shifted from your path there's i, I don't know if if it if, if it will relate to somebody but um you're going on a path and then you just like drop off the path right mm-hmm. you just like got shifted seeing some other stuff you know that's what life is like you see see some of the see some other shit going on around you and you're like oh yeah maybe I'll try to do this try to do that right so yeah i i i got off the path stop working out uh stop stop doing anything related to fitness stop thinking about how i'm going to get trained or something right because you're like oh there is no point the mind just get lazy is just turn off whole system in the back whatever you're thinking while you're here just get like switched off cuz oh, you can't really much do anything that becomes your excuse you got an easy excuse now you know, like mm-hmm. yeah it's corona not people much are moving nothing's yeah. happening so all the thing all the fast track you have done your life courses your study courses and you're just now stuck you're just like mm, this is not in my hand yeah i can do anything about it so it's easier for the mind to have relaxation time that you know like mm, it's not in my hand it's not something that i am responsible for it is what it is and you just like whatever is in your hand you just don't even think about it cuz you know what like a cry baby this isn't working so i'm not going to work about this too was in the bad as the worst shape of my life as a <laughs> physique and like eating shit all the time <laughs> sleeping all the time like literally like playing poker most of the time like okay. wasting money the, the little bit of money that i have right so i got like yeah side track by myself there what brought you out of it i i trying to get a job or something and then um i did get a job i cracked an interview and then i got fired what did you get fired for <laughs> cuz i wasn't paying attention too much to the work <laughs> <laughs> what were you paying attention to cuz it's just like i don't know the mind wasn't right you okay. know like the mind wasn't right enough and then i got hired again and the place was just so toxic for females and i'm like just cuz i did like computer science so it's okay. it's, see, it's also like what are the odds the both thing that i do are like more male dominating so even the study that i did was like more male dominating even the class has like 30 students and i was the only girl in the class okay yeah so so i'm like oh, people don't perceive you like women have like much of a brain to deal with computers and all that stuff right a uh, hard fact but yes people out there do believe that and that was difficult for me cuz like i was working this time was working good but then people are not appreciating it much and they're like oh yeah anything should happens like oh this is her fault so okay. the place got so toxic and i'm like i am not about that shit so i'm like i i got fired slash left or whatever you want to call again and then i was like okay no money no work what is it and then the thing that hit me was um exactly that took me more deep in the dark was at the exact same time my grandmother the woman that i loved the most passed mm. yeah so i i received i was so much into my own stuff that i was not talking to my family a lot there was sometimes that they called and they wanted me to talk to my grandmother that still some in my heart that just like when i talk about her it's like a pain when i do and then that thing just kind of like put me in like depression somewhat depression you know yeah. cuz i was really close to my grandma and i remember the day that my flight was she came into my room and she she sat by my bed and said that few things that this is very personal to me i'm just giving you a summary cuz i i'm not a, i'm not going to be able to talk about it through so good so she said somewhat like when you're going to hear about me not here anymore like i'm gone i don't care where you are or whether you're married or you have kids i want you to come back and say me a goodbye cuz you're one of my favorite kids so i remember i there were like a lot of things she said that day and she made me do a promise you know like literally she was like a woman of word a woman of character that's what i got from her so she gave me that thing that i i never break my promises so 
I promise you, like, you know what? I'll promise you, wherever I am, I'll come back and I'll say you goodbye. I'll be there. Okay. And I was not able to go back. Oh. Yep. Got you. What prevented you? Um, at first was because I didn't have any job, so I couldn't Go, go for it. It's a yeah, I, I couldn't flight. go and I couldn't come back because you need a work permit, proper work permit. You're working on something uh, to come back. So okay. that was part of my fault. Corona time was restrictions a lot. So part reason was that. Part reason was the money issue that I didn't have the money to go back there. Yep. So that thing just hit me that. And all the things that happened in the past months that I was not doing what I was supposed to do when all the other stuff, me not being focused, just hit me at that moment. And just, that thing just wrecked me. That was the, f I've never seen anybody die from my family. So that mm. was the first death that I ever saw. Yeah. That, and the, the woman that is the closest to me that like taught me so much in my life, such a warrior woman. And she's just not there anymore. And what a mind I was that I was too, zoned out into my own stuff that I didn't even talk to her even the, in the last few days. That hurts the most. So that kind of took me down for like a month or so where that I was not talking much to anybody, you know, like just processing the whole stuff. And it's, it's difficult for me to move on, especially from people who I love the most, right? So I, I just like stayed in that zone. And then my brother kind of came back and he's like, gotta lift me up you know like he's like you know you gotta go back remember why you came back here I want you to go and train I want you to find something I want you to be outside I just mm -hmm. want you to get out of the zone yeah. as a good person around you will do so I started looking for a gym uh, the funny story about getting into this gym was the whole credit actually goes to the burgers next door <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, okay. so you guys were terrible at advertisement at that yes, time yes yes we were <laughs> you, you had no still boards. not that good <laughs> You had no boards, nothing like where you can see. Even you put it on uh, Google, you, would, you, would, you wouldn't you would see TriStar. And I was a huge GSP fan. And I always knew that GSP trained at TriStar. Yeah. So I didn't know that Tri TriStar was here. So the one that I know about, like, oh, there's, there's one in Montreal, and there's the one that GSP trained, right? And I had no idea who you were, to be very <laughs> honest. I think I've told you before yeah. that too, right? And... I just like, I came down here, we were like, we were out. I was supposed to give an exam right in, in the next complex. Okay. And we saw this big sign of this burger. They do better advertisement than you. Oh, for guys. sure, for sure. So I'm they like, do. oh, on the way back, I'll eat some burgers. And Shout I, out to 50's Burger. <laughs> yeah. So I'm eating this burger. I'm like, wait a second, TriStar? I have heard this name somewhere. I'm like, damn, that's a gym? And like, <laughs> like, there's like no advertisement on it. And I opened the door and um, our manager, Zach, was here and he was like hitting the bag and I like talked to him like, oh, and he gave me this whole thing like, oh, yeah, oh, you got to pay this much money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, take the, I take the template and I'm like, shit, I don't have that kind of money. <laughs> and I went back and I, I promised Zach that, oh, I'll come back. So as soon as I step out of this door, the very first, I got my focus back, you know, like now I know like what to do. I need to find a job ASAP. I got to save money. I got to come back here, I got to pay their monthly fees and join this gym. And that's exactly what I did. I get back out, I apply for all the jobs. I didn't get good jobs, I was a server in a restaurant. That'll do, that yeah. will just do. I just need money right now, just enough so I can pay for my, uh, for my fees in this gym and I'll just come back in. So time, like I saved money for two months. After two months I joined in here, I came back in here, rinse it is the one who signed me up, if you don't know. Vincent. Yeah, yeah. Vincent signed me up. How the hell Vincent did he do was, that? Yeah, like... I'm, he doesn't work for us. Yeah, he was just <laughs> sitting there. And he's like, oh, you want to get and sign up? I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll sign you up. And there was nobody in the gym, so I signed myself up. I went back and he said, oh, yeah, yeah, we're going to start our classes from 5th July 2022. So, oh, sorry, 2021. Yeah. Yeah, 2021. Yeah. So 5th of July 2021 comes up. I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty stoked that, oh, today's the day that I'm going to really do what I'm here for, right? And I received a phone call, and I came to know that my dog passed away. Oh, uh, brutal. Brutal. Like, every time, every time I started anything related to this, it's just something, something happened. And exact the same thing that, because I was, again, super close to my dog, that just, like, 
what? And spe especially when something comes like very surprisingly at your face, because I just talked to him four hours ago. You talked so he, to the dog. Yeah, I mean, my, I was asking about like how how are you doing it? And it's like my okay, dad showed okay. him like, oh, he's running over here and there. He's like okay, flying, okay. like just he had this thing. He will just run super fast in the gardens. Okay, it's like yeah. he loves the grass. He's like yeah, backward, yeah. backward, 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 <laughs> get the zoomies and all that stuff. So he was getting the zoomies and I'm like, I'm just watching him on the on the phone. I'm getting happy. I'm like, oh, here he is. And yeah. like, I'm planning, like, uh, like I was talking to my father, like I, I want you to make his passport so I can bring him here and all that stuff. <laughs> okay. And then four hours later, it's just Why? not there anymore. That hit me again. I'm like, guys, can, I, I didn't cry much when my grandma, uh, grandma died. I uh, just like that was thing in me and didn't cry it for for long. I just like didn't let that emotion out and then my dog passed away and then everything just like rains down. Just yeah. like just this is just the barrier is closed, the water is flown. Yeah. I just like couldn't stop myself. Could not I don't even remember how long did I was just lying on the ground and when I was lying down there look watching at the ceiling and I'm like remember the last few months of my life and I like, I have two choices from now. I can either stay here and live the streak that I was living in, that would happen exactly when my grandma passes mm -hmm. and get into that zone again, or is this the time that I get back on my feet and just move on and look the other way? Because if I look the same way, I don't think so there is much enough to look for anymore. Yeah. So I remember I was crying and packing my bag. I put on my clothes and I opened this jo door of this gym. Ah. I was sitting down at that bench, my head was down, my eyes were red. That was the first time that I saw you. Wild. Yep, and I had no idea who you were <laughs> at that time. <laughs> That's fine. Nobody else does either. Maybe the YouTubers do now a little bit, yeah. but so, at that time, no one did. <laughs> so, yeah. I remember your first line was to me was, yeah, you got to remove that chain that my that my mom gave to me. I was wearing that chain because I was oh. missing my grandma a lot of that day. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh you gotta remove it. And that that just I took it as a as an irony that yes, I have to leave everything behind now. Oh, okay. So I removed that chain and while removing it I'm like, yep, this is it. Yeah. This chain is the significance of me leaving what's behind and moving forward in my life mm. and do what I I wanted to do always. So yep. That well, that's a, that's a real testament to, to you and your personality because I feel like a lot of people in those situations, and understandably so, a lot of people in those type of situations will fold, will choose the easier path, will choose to lie down and cry for another month or two months. And maybe they never get out of that funk. Maybe that, that funk leads them down a horrible path that leads to a real, a place that resembles hell, right? So that's a real testament to you and, and your personality and, uh, and your parents and the things that they've instilled in you and your life. So now you're here and you're beginning your training path. What was that like? What was it like to, to begin the MMA journey, to begin to discover mixed martial arts? The first thing that I noticed in our gym was when I get my chin up was, oh my God, there is no female. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There is yeah. no female. There was literally nobody on the mat. Yeah. That was my gender. Yeah. <laughs> as far as I know. Yeah. <laughs> so, so What was that were, like? Uh, so, as telling you the day that I joined in and the whole thing that was happening, I was so above of everything else, right? So that that was the least of my concerns at that mm -hmm. point, you know. Was so much going on. So, I personally didn't at first approach the room as in this is very male dominating room you know i approach as in like as an athlete who wants to just get on his his or her journey mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter whoever who, who else is on who's the around yeah yeah so for me it didn't matter i believe a lot of people around me did it did it did matter that i was there uh, i felt like for some quite a few people um, but then I was like, mm, it's just in my head, it's like everybody's cool, nobody, like, in, especially in our gym, it's like the environment is so good that they don't treat you as a different person, like, especially on your gender-based system, mm -hmm. right? They're like, oh no, she's a female, to that. yeah, I don't want to roll with this girl or something like that, most of them. So, the other thing that, in, uh, like, that I got my eyes on was like how... Um, combat the sport, especially jiu-jitsu, and how female can see is intimidating. 
I feel like even the students that I teach females are like more so going towards things that are not that much of contact like boxing or kickboxing as compared to yeah, you. So that's just definitely. like an aspect of a female that they are not too comfortable in combat sport. They just feel like this is, this is something not for me. Yeah. But again, I am being the, the one that I am. I, don't, I couldn't <laughs> care less. I just wanted to smash people from, <laughs> from, from day one. Yep, so journey was, I, 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 I don't, I personally, if I'm being too honest, I don't see my journey as, as any different from any other male or female regardless field start. I don't know why is it, because the more I talk to other people, especially females, I feel like they have something different coming up their way when they started, mm -hmm. as compared to me, like there were different things like, mm, uh, maybe it's not for me, like getting hit into the face was difficult for them. Um, Rolling with guys were difficult for them, right? So getting so, hit in the face didn't bother you? Didn't bother me at all. Rolling with guys didn't bother you? It didn't bother me at all. It just, that's why I say that I don't see my journey as any different as if any guy or a boy will start a journey in this gym. Mm -hmm. For me, it was the same. I, I, I don't see like anything that coming up, me as a female, that was like, oh, I'm a female, that's, that's why it's a problem. If I was a guy, that wouldn't be my problem. I just see everything that there is no, no difference for me. Mm -hmm. For a very long time, until I understand that there is a difference when it comes to like really fighting. I, in the beginning, I used to think like, oh, well, I can fight guys too. Like, uh, <laughs> okay. I should be able to take people down no matter what their gender is. I still yeah. do believe that. Um, but then I realized that, oh no, there's a lot of difference between the strength and advantages and all that stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, even bone density. Even bone density. The skeletons. Different. Yeah, so yes, there is a lot of difference, but other than that, I don't see much of a big difference, as in my point of view. Okay, so not necessarily something that's like uh, feminine-centered, but what did you find to be the biggest difficulty when you started training? What did you have the, the what did you struggle with the most? Maybe a technique to learn or a, or a situation? For me was, I didn't struggle much till now, like with techniques or like skills, like over in the mat. I believe you, you see me a lot, so you would be better to like tell about that. Like, oh, you know, I see you struggle with that thing. The main thing that in the first year that I struggled with a lot was actually the balance to create between my training stuff and my outer life, right? Mm, yeah. So for, for me, it was the hardest because I couldn't do what I do here if I'm not doing what I'm doing outside, Yeah. if that makes sense. So in order to be here, I have to be outside too, isn't like to be working, you know? And that was still, still it's very difficult for me to balance out, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, like I want to train, but I got to work too. And if I don't work, I won't get no money. And how the hell I'll, I'll pay how did you How did you rectify that situation? How did you create a schedule for yourself that worked in between work and training? So part was that I knew like our gym has, like most of the gym has a schedule, right? So I have to go out and look for a work that actually goes exactly how the gym schedule works, right? So if the schedule is like we are training in the, in the evening most of the time, I got to find a work that's in the morning. That didn't happen quite a while. That's why I got fired from a bunch of places again because, you know, like when you're a server, they want you to be there on the weekends. They want you to be there in the evening because that's a rush hour and you got to be at the training. So I always struggle with that. But I eventually like, you know, I just had my terms very clear with every place that I go to that, yes, I, you won't see me after five o'clock here. Yeah. So no. you, <laughs> you told the people that were going to employ you yeah, what your hours were going, going to, be. to be. Yeah. When some would you do that? In the interview? <laughs> yep. I will tell them. And some people won't hire me. Some people, when they're like, oh, they really want somebody to be on their team because they are like have less team, they'll, most of the time, those were the one who will hire me. Mm. They like they need people to work, right? They have like so much things going on in the restaurant or outside, so they're like, okay, we need a person. That that's fine. Even you work like two days, so there were places that only work for two days that work with my schedule. So money was very low, very very low, right? And then there were times, and they're like, they they will say like, you gotta stay, and I'm like. I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm not leaving. Because that's one of the hardest things, right? Yeah. Like, I think that's going to be true for pretty much everybody that's yeah. listening, that's, that's a competitor. Man, female, doesn't matter. 
if you want to train and you want to fight, finding employment that supports that is very, very difficult. We've made several videos on why fighters are broke and this is like yeah. the number one reason we're broke exactly. is because we got to train so much that it's hard to work. Um, but you actually auditioned your employers. Yeah. So you didn't audition for them and that there's some power in that, right? Yeah. Like knowing what you want and committing to it, being willing to starve in order to get that perfect situation, right? So as I said before, like in the beginning, like whether I'm all in or I'm all out, I'm that I have that character in me that I won't like. I am very clear with my priorities, and that at that point, my priority was to train, train as much as possible, mm. like be here in all the classes. I could have been easier and life could have been a little bit easier if I were like, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I can, maybe like one day it's fine, right? But it was, it wasn't just, it wasn't fine for me. I don't know, there's something that I quite not understand how my mind works about this thing. You know, I, I that's some things that are difficult for, for my mind to perceive and be okay with it. For me, saying no to training is very hard. Yeah, than I noticed. <laughs> it's, it's like it's, I, I quite there's something I'm still figuring myself out so I don't know why is that I sometimes I feel because I was just getting here to train was wasn't easy for me Definitely. as I've talked to you before to for that door to open for me after like knocking on that door for like literally years. For six years 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 and years and then finally it opened so I am maybe I'm still afraid or scared that if it shut down this time, I don't know how long it's going to take it to yeah. happen again. Yeah. So maybe that's the that's the back, back of my mind that's working, but there's something that I just cannot be okay with. Like, be in the house while everybody else is having fun on the mat. Mm -hmm. It's just like, no, nah, not my thing. <laughs> okay, so let's fast forward a bit. So yeah. you, you come in 2021, you end up in the gym. Yeah. It's 2024 now, you just had your first fight. Leading up to that first fight, so like say the last like, because I've been trying to get you a fight for probably a year. Yeah. What were some of the difficulties that you had surrounding fighting? Like there's some that I know already that I could, I could just name for you. Okay, maybe we'll do that. Okay, so you're the only female on a fight team. and. Yeah. There is a, like, we have one other girl, Samantha. Um, she's not super active though, but she's always great with support. So shout out to Samantha, we love you. But it's predominantly a male room, especially in the competition classes. Yeah. What is that like? It's difficult, I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes it's, it's very difficult because you won't get the same reactions what you will get in fighting a female. Yeah. So that, uh, that being said, that's, that is a lot different. You cannot just make that up by going against a guy who is your size. Even that not gonna make sense because the twitch muscle, the reaction is gonna be very different. Uh, girls have so uh, uh, good at some points where guys are not, right? They're like, the body type is different. The clinch is gonna be different. Everything is gonna be different. That's what I struggle the most when I come to training is like, I'm not sure most of the time that whether it will be the same reaction by, by the one that I'm, with, mm -hmm. with the girl that I'm fighting, right? And most of the time it's not the same reaction too. It's not, yeah. It's not. Because here it's all male, but I try to go fight. Whenever, whenever I get a chance to fight a female or something, I see there are a lot, a lot, a lot of difference. It's not the same. Some people perceive it that uh, f female fighting and training with males all the time makes them stronger. and. To some extent, I do believe also that, yeah, just like, because everything is just up a notch, but it's quite not the same. And I wouldn't underfy it as being strong, making you stronger. Because mm. wh what you're going to do with the techniques where you're strong, when you're not going to get the same reaction. Yeah. 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 It's just, it's some technique that you know, but you're never going to use. It doesn't matter how strong it is it is because yeah. you're never going to get the same reaction yeah right maybe sometimes you get a better reaction in that sometimes it's just like so tricky because yeah it, it, i don't know if sh i should say that or not but like females are trickier than males to fight with i feel like because i don't know why it is that but i feel like the way that uh mma works guys are more adapted to one specific style and they have toned it down so almost every guy you will see some similarities 
But I personally feel like when I go against females, every female is different because mm. they perceive the game in a different way, maybe. Okay. Their body takes in a different way. And do you think that they're more specialized? Like, I think, maybe I'm wrong here, but I think what you're saying is that when you're working with males, that they are more generalized. So they're kind of good everywhere. Yeah. And they're all kind of like that. Yeah. Whereas in female MMA, it's like, oh, this crazy Taekwondo girl. Exactly. That is now an MMA, MMA fighter, fighter. Or a crazy wrestler. Yeah. Is now, so they're a little bit more of like a specialist it's, that's it's adapted. Then adapted. Exactly. That's what I'm trying to say. Like guys have like more adapted themselves in f when it comes to MMA. The percentage is very high of that adaptiveness. Like I feel like guys are like, oh, when you go against, you will see some similarities. You will see like, mm. that's why the reactions that come from the guys are almost the same. Mm. But when it comes to the females, it's not the same because it's just the heat of the moment. I feel like sometimes you're like, oh yeah, they don't know sometimes what is happening. Because like, for example, if I go against a Taekwondo girl, uh, they won't know much about what's happening with the, with the clinch system. Yeah. In the grappling system. So their reactions just like way different. It's exactly the same when you roll, when, when, when a blue belt or purple belt roll with the very first new white belt guy. Yeah, just So if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, like it's... it's unpredictable. Unpredictable. It, yeah. It, yeah, like you don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. it, but that doesn't make them very good at what they're doing. Yeah. But you just don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, it's still not easy. So it's the same. <laughs> Yeah. It's the same with females, I'll okay. say. Not in a bad way, but you don't know what's going to happen. Okay. Yeah, the reaction might be very good, or the, it would be just like different reaction. Do you find that the aggression or intensity is the same when you go with women as it is with men? No, it's not the same. What's if you really piss off a guy, being a female, then maybe you will see a good intensity. I feel like most of the guys who go with female have like control intensity. Straight up, I feel like, yeah, at every gym, that's very common. I have not been to a gym where I've seen like, oh, this guy's just like a chucking women off. Yeah. Yeah, they're like controlled. But I feel like they still change the momentum if the girl they're going against is really good at, the girl is chipping them off. Yeah, yeah, then they get like, clipped. Yeah, they get clipped, <laughs> then the whole story changes. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to female, I feel like, Females are very hard-headed. Okay. Even if you clip a girl, she'll still going to come forward. <laughs> yeah. I, I've seen this. I've seen this with everybody. Like, it's not like you clip somebody and they'll back off. Like, okay. guys will. Guys will take a back off, step back, and they're like, okay, it's on now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now they're going to look for something. Now yeah. they're going to like, okay, I got to be, I can't, I can't aff get afford to get hit by this woman again in the yeah. same room. You know, like, so that's things. So they better get focused more on defensive and then attack more and trying to get you more where females are like it's on <laughs> you are going and i am going you gotta take some and i'm gonna give you some <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's what it is that's what it is that's that's how you, if you actually see female fighting that is it yeah and that's why it's so incredible because believe me guys can't take that many shots that as compared to as females take that many shots in a fight. Yeah. Like the percentage is very like, it's, it's a la landslide for me. Like I've seen females fight when most of the fights, when they go like full rounds, yeah. it's just like so many hits on each of their faces where guys, if they take that many hits, maybe because the precision is a little bit different, uh, the fight won't end the way that females fighting. End. Yeah. Yeah. If that makes any Do sense. Do you think that that is more speaking to power that maybe males have or is it speaking to the ability to absorb damage that females have i feel like it's more the damage that a female can absorb okay. um, just the way it's, see how women is created in nature right i don't know if many people will agree with that but we are actually made in a way i feel like that we can actually bear more pain no that, that's yeah. scientific fact that's a, like giving childbirth yeah. right so that's why i feel like women are female are able to take more punches and more damage in a fight as compared to guys because yeah. the tendency is just so high uh because the way we are built the way our body works the way our, way our mind works it just makes you so stronger because you, you know you can take that pain whereas in guys uh, I feel like guys can't 
take that much damage. I don't know why is that, but uh, the thing that I think is like because they are in nature, they are more powerful as in strong hitter than females. Yeah. So taking that shot, it's uh, by another male, it's kind of like more damaging as compared to females. Yeah. Because I feel like there is not much too like damaging power as in come to punches, if that makes sense. But yeah. like taking more intense shots is, I feel like that's more happen in female fighting than as compared to guys. But if you change the scenario and you make like a guy fight a female, then you will know what I'm trying to say is like female won't be able to take punches from the guys. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So th if that makes sense. So totally. Yeah. I think a real easy place that we can see this um, is just on pain tolerance alone. If you see, if you guys ever go and watch any fights that end in arm bar that are male fights, the arm doesn't break. And that doesn't mean the, the guy just has a stronger joint. That's not a thing, okay? Or they have a weaker arm bar. That's not a thing either. It's the man will tap to an arm bar where a woman will very often, like 90% of the time, they will yeah. not tap and their arm will break and then they still won't tap, yeah. right? Where I've been arm barred in a fight, right? By Mr. whatever his name is, right? And I tap as soon as it was straight. I'm like, nope, that's enough. <laughs> no, thank you, right? I'm not down to get my arm just snapped in half and <laughs> try to keep fighting. No, thanks, I'm trying to fight again. But uh, yeah, women are down, right? And maybe that, maybe that is just like a mental toughness thing, but I truly believe that it comes down to pain tolerance. I believe that because of childbirth, uh, women are able to take and more pain. And I'm pretty sure there's scientific studies that show that as well. Not just childbirth, like think about a woman like bleed every month. Yeah. And pain is yeah. very bad. Yeah, underrated. Yeah, it's it's like, we just like walk around like nothing happening, but it's a lot of happening. So it's <laughs> like, when it happens to you every month, it's just like, sure, this is an easy work for me. Yeah. Like, and yeah, their pain tolerance is, is very high. Yeah. I know I have done that too, like not tapping and just, if you remember one of my jiu-jitsu tournament. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you just knocked a girl out in your first fight in six seconds. Yeah. Now you attributed that to me. Yeah. I teach a lot of people, a lot of people who are apparently men that have a lot of power in their arms and shoulders and backs and all the like, they haven't knocked anybody out in six seconds. Also, you don't see female fighters knock other female fighters out very often. They can, like we've just been talking about, they can absorb damage quite well. Why are you able to do that? Because I'm able to see maybe. You, you have to, I feel like, how can I explain this? How was I able to do it? You just, I was, I don't know how it's gonna sound, but I was just there, if that makes sense. I was there. I feel like all this happened because I was there the whole day. I don't know if you remember, but you were talking about like how you should feel while walking out to the stadium and all this stuff. And even like when my, my song was about to play, you said into my ear that you do what you feel like you do. Everything is going to happen as you want it, right? So when I was walking out, I, I was reading my name on the bout number four sheet in front of me. And I told you that too, that it occurred to me like the best way to finish this fight is by knockout for sure. And the best chance that I'm gonna get to finish this fight is gonna be in the first round. So when they put me on the white spot and you were behind me and I just like, I felt so much connection with, with myself and your voice. So the whole, you wouldn't believe it, but Throughout the walk that I did and all the stuff they were saying me, I wasn't hearing anything. It was just like a pin drop silent in my ears. The only thing that I could hear was your voice and the only thing that I could see was my eyes were seeing. And I had this thing in my head that the best shot is going to be in the first round. Mm. In the first round. Like, you know, the shock's going to come. Yeah. Like, if I give her a chance to like feel me a little bit, she's going to know. That yeah. she don't want to get close to me. Yeah. And I want this woman to be very, very close to me. Okay. So that was my thing. And as soon as I step in, I just like, uh, my main focus, as you said, your voice was telling me, yeah, you got to take the center right away. Uh, the ring is very small. You, 
could keep a good pressure so her kicks don't work because she, she's a good kicker. That what I did. And my eyes were open. I was there in the moment. I didn't care that what's going around me was happening. I, my focus was just on this part. Mm. The only thing that I was seeing was this. Mm. That's it. And that's what I did. Yeah, you that's hit it. I did. Yeah, I hit it. I hit the same spot. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was happening. Yeah. So thanks for staying to the end, guys. We are going to produce a course. This is going to be the first course that's ever existed, to my knowledge, uh, for women in MMA. This is going to be the female fight guide taught to you by yours truly, Rhythm. Or I keep, I keep wrecking her name, okay? Rhythm. Just like, yeah, Rhythm and Blues. Yeah, Rhythm the Wrecking Ball Core. Click the link in the description. Check that out and learn from this up and coming superstar. Rhythm, thanks for being here. Thanks for uh, sharing with us. Oh yeah, what is your Instagram? So uh, where can people find you? Yeah, so the name that my coach has given me, Wrecking, so I put it the Wrecking Rhythm. Yeah. And that's my Instagram. Yeah, and her name is spelled R-I-D-H-A-M. Yeah, obviously, we'll put it down there as well. So thanks for sticking around, guys. Uh, if you like this, comment, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you get it all. Peace out.